Hello and thanks for watching creating a website for your students using Google Sites. This is part one of a three part series. You'll have to watch parts two and three to be able to completely finish your site. I had to chop this up and it stop, stops a little bit abruptly after part one. Um, so I apologize for the abruptness. Just move right on to part two and then to part three uh, and I'll pick up right where I left off. Again, thanks for watching. Hi and welcome to this video tutorial. Um, I'm going to be showing you today how to create a website uh, for your students using Google Sites. The first thing that I want to do is I want to show you a website that I created for my students. You can see this is my website right here. It's Mr. Reichelt's Main West website. You can see the URL up here, greichelt.com, so you can get a custom URL. Um, and I just have a basic welcome message uh, for my students and a picture of the school. Over here in the navigation side I have uh, all the different classes that I teach um, as well as classroom rules and a way to contact me. So if we go to one of the classes that I teach Linux Plus I have built in here I have a calendar um, and the calendar just shows what we're doing every day so my students don't have to come in and ask me hey Mr. Reichel what are we doing today I can just uh, you know show them the calendar and they can see what we're doing today and what we're doing um, in upcoming weeks also on here I have all the worksheets and links to labs and uh, just videos on you know how to do things in class just basic stuff that we do in class you can also attach stuff to your web page I attached um, this is the class seating chart that I put down here. Um, I could also attach worksheets, but the way that I handle worksheets is I actually upload them to Google Docs, um, and then I create a link, and you can just click on here, and my students can then just click on the worksheet and uh, be able to download it or print it or um, do whatever they need to do. So, um, you know, it, it tends to work out for them. Uh, here's one of the worksheets right now. Um, and then, so I have my classroom rules also on this navigation bar, um, and then contact information. So uh, there's just a really simple, easy way to contact me. Now, Google offers uh, some very advanced websites. My website is more basic, um, and if you're new to creating a website, I would recommend making a website uh, more like mine. Um, but you can really get advanced with Google and ma make some really spectacular stuff. So in order to start, you need to have a Google account. Um, if you don't have a Google account already, just go to gmail.com and sign up. Um, and then once you have a Google account, just go ahead and sign into Google. You can go to gmail.com or google.com slash docs and um, uh, sign in. So once you're ready to begin, go ahead and uh, go to Google, um, log in, and you're going to want to click on more. Um, you're going to want to go down to... Uh, sites and go ahead and click on sites and you'll get a page that looks like this now this is my site right here that I just created um, but we're gonna actually be creating a new website so I'm gonna click on create new site and then it, the first option it gives you is to choose a template um, now these templates allow you to create a beautiful website they, they pretty much offer pre-built uh, beautiful websites and all you have to do is fill in your content and uh, edit them. However, um, I advise you to use, especially if you're new to Google Sites, use a more simple template. Um, a lot of these templates look very beautiful but they're fairly advanced and uh, they can get overwhelming if you don't know what you're doing. Um, so I'm going to browse the gallery for more. Um, now you'll see right up at the top there is a classroom site. When I preview this, um, this is just, it is a great template, however, this is very advanced. Um, there's a lot of things going on here, and if you don't know what you're doing, uh, this can be a little bit uh, difficult to manage. If you feel confident, though, um, you can definitely use this template. I would actually recommend building a website first, messing around in Google Sites, um, and once you feel confident using the uh, service, then uh, move on to a more advanced template such as this. Um, I'm actually going to be using, uh, I found a lot of good ones under this personal and family. Um, I'm going to be using uh, family site. The one that I used before was personal and professional. That's the one that I'm currently using uh, for my Google site. But I'll use family site for this tutorial. So I'm going to hit select, name of site. 
Alright, I'll go, uh, Mr. Reichelt's, um, student, STU, student website. Go ahead and call yours whatever you want, um, you know, uh, I'm, I'm calling mine Mr. Reichelt's student website. On my actual, I call my Mr. Reichelt's Main West website, um, Go ahead and do that. Um, right below here, this is going to be the URL, or this is going to be the way that your students can access your website. You'll notice on my website, I actually have a, just a regular domain name, a, like a .com. To get that, you actually have to register a domain name. It costs like uh, 12 bucks a year or so. Um, if you don't want to do that, if you don't want to pay, that's not a big deal. Um, but your the way that your students are going to access the website is through this. So https colon sites dot google dot com backslash sites backslash and then whatever you want. Um, the default it's automatically going to fill this in with the name of your site. If you want to change this, like if you don't want it to be Mr. Reichelt, you can just delete this. You know, you might want it to just be your last name or something a little bit more easy for them to remember. Underneath this, I have the ability to choose a theme. Now, if you're using a template, um, you don't really need to choose a theme. Just using the blank is totally fine. Um, I'm using the template default. However, if you're using a blank template, I would recommend choosing a theme. Um, this will add some color to your website and it'll just give it a little bit of flair without you having to do a lot. Uh, but like I said, uh, I chose to use, I'm going to be using the family site uh, template so I'm not going to mess around with a the theme. Um, under more options, I have the ability to type in a little site description here. Um, a website for Mr. Reichelt's students and parents. Um, oops, let me fix that. Um, and then what I share with. So should everyone in the world be able to see this website or only people I specify? If you choose only people I specify, those people have to have a Google account and they have to be logged in to be able to see your website. That can be good for some people, but I've found that a lot of my students just get confused with this and they aren't able to log in, so I just share my website with everyone in the world. Um, I just don't put anything uh, inappropriate up there. The site does not contain mature content. And then right here I'm going to type in the word to create a P. And then I'm going to just go ahead and type in whatever word is over there. Like create site. Oops, looks like I typed it in wrong. T-O-M-M-I. And it's going to say up here creating your site. To create the site it's going to take about 30 seconds to a minute. Um, and once it's created it's going to go to the main page. Here's my main page right here. So now I can get ready and uh, start editing this site. So this is the website uh, that I created. Um, and in here I can click on edit page right away, but I'm not going to click on that uh, to be able to edit the website and how this main page looks. First thing that I want to do is I want to get my, uh, my website all set up. So get all the pages that I want and uh, just figure out the sidebar. Then I'm going to work on editing the specific pages and putting up the content that I want. So in order to do that, I'm going to come over here once my website's been created. I'm going to click on more actions. I'm going to go down to manage site. So I'll go down to manage site. Um, now I'm going to go through each one of these tabs and talk about what is available on them uh, and then we're gonna start messing around with the website so the first thing that I have on here is recent site activity so if you updated a website or updated a page or deleted a page or um, did anything that's gonna appear in the recent site activity one of the nice things about Google Sites is there's history um, and so if you do something that you didn't mean to do like accidentally deleting a site or changing something that you didn't want to change you can look through the history or this recent site activity and be able to go back to it uh, and so you can bring back pages that you didn't want deleted and um, recover content and stuff like that. The next tab right over here is pages. So this is going to be every page that I have. Um, 
if you didn't have a template, there would be nothing here except for the main page. However, because I am using a template, they automatically populated and created like family blog, family calendar, family map, profiles, all these things. Um, I can't necessarily get rid of them on this web, on this little th tab right here, pages, but it just gives you a nice view of all the different pages that you have. And there actually are sub pages. So you can see I have my my website right here and then these are all the pages inside of the website um, and then there's sub pages inside of these pages attachments uh, so these are all the things that are attached to your web page if you wanted to have a picture on your website you can put them in the attachments file and then be able to bring them to your website that's what they've done here you can also uh, you could see on my website I attached the uh, seating chart you can upload worksheets, anything that you want on your website um, you can put in here. So page templates um, so these are going to be a lot of the things that were pre-created for you um, if you used a uh, if you used a template. Uh, it gives you the profile pages, recipes I don't really want any of these things um, so right off the bat I'm gonna go ahead and just delete them I'm gonna select both of these I'm going to hit delete. Um, right up here I have standard templates. These are things that you're not allowed to delete, but they uh, provide you some uh, different ways to organize content on your website. The main web page, this is what the default is, this is what we mostly use. Um, there's also lists, so uh, rather than having like a just a plain list on here, it kind of provides a nice easy way to be able to manage uh, what things are going on and uh, provide an easy way for your uh, site viewers to be able to view different lists of things. A file cabinet, if you do upload a lot of attachments to your website, a file cabinet is a great way to be able to allow your users to access all those things in an easy way. And then announcements. Announcements is like in uh, a micro blog or a small blog. So you type in the announcements, and it just feeds that into your website, um, and it populates that content automatically, and it formats it in a in a nice little way. Um, I generally use web pages. Um, I just use this, but lists, file cabinets, and announcements. I know a bunch of teachers that use all of these as well. Um, they're all just great templates to have. Under deleted items. Um, so if you had something that you did delete, for instance, I deleted this, um, it goes into deleted items. Um, it doesn't necessarily delete them permanently. If I did want to delete something permanently, I would come into deleted items and hit deleted permanently. If I act, um, the only reason I would want to delete something permanently is if I was running out of space. Google Sites automatically gives you 100 megabytes of space, so uh, I wouldn't necessarily delete things permanently unless I was running out because this allows you a great way that you can um, recover objects. Um, if, you, if you delete something and you keep it in here for uh, four weeks or so, uh, Google will automatically delete it. You can see delete permanently and it will automatically delete it in four weeks. Um, so. Uh, you don't have to worry about, well, I just want to get rid of that stuff. It'll automatically delete it, but uh, this is a nice place to, if you deleted something and you, you want to recover it, um, you can come in here and recover it. All right, well, that ends part one of this video. I apologize for the abruptness. If you'd like to continue watching this whole video, please watch parts two and three.